Tom Vassell's Top 100 Games of All Time. Mike Delicio, bravissimo, sporadically bored, but never pianissimo. Z, y'all see, voice of the people. Yeah, and so that's why uh, the diarrhea. Oh, hey, oh, everybody. Oh. What is wrong with you? Oh. <laughs> oh, Vassal. Oh. I'm on all the drugs right now. <laughs> what? My goodness. All right, well, if that's what we're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Dice Tower, everybody. Um, thank My. you for showing up to the top 20. It's exciting here. Uh, we're in the final yeah. 20 of our top 100 games of all time. Yeah. We're glad you're here. If you like this video, give us a like. We have to say that because people never for always forget. But likes yeah. help us other people find us. Also, we want to give a like to the World Series of Board Gaming. Very excited about yeah. this convention, uh, which is sponsoring a set of videos. And and I, yes, they're sponsoring the videos. But I, you could ask these guys behind the scenes. I told them how much I loved this con last year. Well, I you really came, did. You came you really back did. from this convention. Jazz. You it did. Was, yeah, it was kind of like you were reinvigorated. I came to Essen and... <laughs> yes, I guess that's but, true. Yeah, that's when we true. met up with you again, I should say, you were very jazzed about it. Mm -hmm. I just... There was a good selection of people there. Some people were there as, like, plus ones to the people in the tournaments. Yeah. And they were just playing games for fun. But I was really impressed with even the tournaments where people were teaching their opponents games that they didn't know. Like, because if you win a game, if you win one of the, what they call the ring tournaments, one of the 16 big tournaments, then you play one of the other tournaments for the, the semifinals... And that might be a game that you're not as good at or no. Yeah. In fact, the guy who won did not know Ticket's Ride, which was the semifinal. So he played it like 12 times the night before That's to learn it. Amazing. And then won it. That's amazing. It really is. So, yeah, there's like 16 big ring events. Then there's a big finale. Someone's going to win $25,000. But there's also side events. Like there might be a Carcassonne tournament. There might be a, uh, a Ready, Set, Bet constantly running on the side. These are possibilities. Mm. And there's also open gaming, a big gaming library. It's going to be fantastic. It's in Bally's, which is right in the center of Las Vegas. And so there's also delicious food everywhere. You there's know also it. a candy store downstairs, which I found. And a miniature golf course and a human body exhibit. That was still there? I didn't go to that. The human was, body exhibit was there. It's been there forever. Last time we were at Bally's. Yeah. Yep. Well, good night. Those bodies must be ranked by now, <laughs> boy. Uh, is there like a pen around? I, know, I, see I got you. No, you don't want to use your pen. Here, take it. Give me a good pen. Take it. I'll... I see a pencil over there. Where? Where's the pencil? Way back here. No. Oh, this is not going to be here good. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I got the chair, Mike. Uh, yeah. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. All right. Someone's... James, happy birthday. Happy We're going to get started here now. So on my top ten... Oh, boy. You actually describe how to do the contest. Oh, yeah, there's a contest, folks. <laughs> you can enter to get a $450 off gift certificate to an entry to the World Series Board Gaming, which is the whole entry covers everything. It covers your hotel rooms, mm. uh, you going there, you playing in the tournaments, and it is not deducted from your cash prize afterwards. That'd be like, how much yeah. did you pay? No. You can win $25,000 or ten, or five, or one. And there's all kinds of other prizes they were giving out there, too. That's amazing, yeah. So yeah how yeah. do you get that uh, gift certificate? Emails at contest at dicetower.com mm. and put the subject line, put the word... <laughs> Vegas. Vegas. Oh, All right. Leading the witness, I see. All right. All right. Anyway, so we're in today's top 20. Mm -hmm. So I don't have any brand new games here. What? Although three of these were in my top 10 last year. So they dropped down to the top mm. 20. Okay. That means there's new games in the top 10. That if, I not... know, if I know how geometry works, that means there's new games in the top 10 now. Wow. I Two have... of the people's choice were in the top 10 also last year, but one of the people's choice was 72, and it moved up quite a bit. What? Yeah. All this and more coming Ooh. right after the break. <laughs> Thank you to our sponsor, number 20. This episode sponsored by the number 20 and the letter MD. Oh, I got you. It stands for a doctor, but today... Stands for Mike Delisio. Mike Delisio, MD. That was the dream of my parents. Was it? No. 
All right. And Maybe it was. What do I know? I mean, I, they never pushed you me never to be a asked doctor. Them. No, no I didn't. I'm like, no. I'm, uh, I'll that's because they. It's, it's, no, that's too dark. Never mind. I'm forging that's my. Like, forging we need my a doctor path. here. Mike's like, well, if I had only gone. Come yeah. On. Is there a marine biologist? All right. That's a Seinfeld reference. Number twenty is a game that is brand new to the list, and uh, it's going to add to the chorus of people that are bemoaning that sometimes I put games that are hard to get a hold of on the list. Look, I'm sorry. He's not. This game has is taken my gaming life by, by storm. It has. It There's has. something new to the list that mm -hmm. is hard to get also, and you're a big champion of... It's that isn't Aqua Garden yes. and isn't Traps of the Wind. Oh, it's higher than those. But is there a chance that this will be available in the future? I well, sure like, hope so. It's that's definitely like, could it available. Possibly be a more open-ended question. It's yes. definitely available in the Dice Tower Library right now. I know what this is, and have hope, people. Have hope. Okay, thank you. Confirmed by Tom Vassell. My number that twenty is, confirmed by Tom is Comic Hunters. Yes, yeah, still confirmed. This <laughs> is a game now. That was 100% and I want to make one thing really clear okay. when I say this. Okay. As you probably know, if you saw board game smorgasbord this morning, I'm not the biggest Marvel fan. I like Marvel. Yeah. I like comics, but I'm not. Like, I'm not necessarily the target audience for this game thematically. Right. I like it. I'm not off-put by it, but it's not why I was so excited about, about it. This, to me, is does for drafting what modern art does for auctions. I agree. Okay, so modern a art great... is, is a Kinesia auction game where it's all different types of auctions. So if you like auctions, modern art is great because here's this type of an auction, here's that type of an auction, here's this other type. Comic Hunters is four different forms of drafting. I love card drafting games. Adore it. And I especially like it when it is integrated into a set collection game that makes so much sense. Now, this could have been collect board games, it could have been collect, you know, any music, any number of things, but it works fantastically here. The idea is that you're going to four different locations. You're going to a comic store to get the new stuff. You're going online to get new stuff and older stuff. You're, and you're going to conventions to get everything. And you're going to these locations and you're doing different forms of drafting. Mm -hmm. You know, you have the basic Sushi Go, Seven Wonder style drafting. You've got drafting where you are placing out uh, cards in a row one at a time and then you're kind of like bidding on those. There's a, there's a, a little bit of, a, of an auction in there as well. And then you've got this one very unique one where it's a five by five grid except for the center spot is empty and you can choose one particular character, pick a row or column, get all the cards of that type, you can move cards around. It's just such a clever little game. It was only available, still currently only available in Brazil. It's a Brazilian publisher. However, we've okay. talked it up a bunch. I recommend, yeah. if you are interested in whatever Mike is saying here, uh -huh. which is good, this game feels like it could be, it could be. essential for people to get could just, be essential, yeah. Just hang on, okay? Hang on. Don't go out of your way to buy a very expensive I, copy. I would agree. But come to a Dice Terror event and play our copy here because any one of us in the, audio, in, the, in the studio could teach it to you. I mean, we all played it. We all like the game, I think. If a mm -hmm. publisher picks this up mm -hmm. and prints it, we'll be the first to let you know. That'll be a... Well, we'll tweet it out for sure. There you go, Tom. There you go. Um, my number 20 is Comic Hunters, a spectacular drafting game. My number 20 is new to my list. It's a new game. Uh, and it's a game that really impressed me this past year, obviously. There were a few that I expected to like and, uh, you know, ended up somewhere on that spectrum. But few of them are games that I feel, upon looking at them, knowing the designer, kind of, you know, feeling it out, where I go, okay, this is kind of a sequel or kind of an evolution of something. I hope I like it. And it blows the original game away. Mm. This is Evergreen. Wow. Evergreen is kind Top of... 20! Whoa, I almost just wrote Evergreen now. I don't know it's why. It's kind of like <laughs> photosynthesis. It's from the same designer. And it uses one mechanism from that game. But it's a core mechanism. The yeah. idea of the sun shining in from the four sides. And it rotates as the game goes on. But everything else here is so much more interesting to me than photosynthesis was. The idea that you are controlling your own board. You're not sharing one with anybody. You're doing your own puzzle. You can grow your own trees. There's a card drafting mechanism with some, some really interesting uh, implications. 
where you are taking a car, doing a special ability, and it denotes a location on your map that you may affect. And when everyone is done drafting, the card that's left over goes onto a sideboard and affects scoring for the end of the game. I love that. Yeah. I don't have a name for that, but it's probably one of my top ten mechanisms. Wow. You know, and that, again, I, I know a few games that do it. You know, I can't yeah. think of anything right now, but there's a few games that do that whole draft, and the one left over does something. Millie Fiore does that, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that. It's so also clean. A big fan of that. It's, it's cool. Fun. It's so neat. Mm -hmm. It gives that last player to draft something that, cool yes. to think about. Vegetable stock. Vegetable that, stock. That does that too. Yes. 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 That's true. Yes, exactly. Um, That's a neat mechanic. You're right. So, yeah, Evergreen was just. Came out of nowhere for me and absolutely blew me away. I love the feel of this, the elegance of this game, how engaging and interesting it is. Ah, oh, man, yeah, I, I just, I want to play it right now. That's it, it. Just all right, folks. We'll see you all later. Catch you later. We got to play a game of Evergreen. Evergreen, baby, number twenty. I want to say thank you to N Shaw, who said we're good at teaching games. To Doctor Balmy for the super chat. Genway says Iowa. <laughs> The greatest state in the union, but the oh. greatest country, says Ven, is Switzerland. Thank you, one and all. My number 20 was 15 last year, 68 the year before that. And maybe with the new announced expansion will go higher. I joined the people in loving on Beyond the Sun. Wow. Wow. What a Top fantastic. It, you know how much I like tech trees. Yeah. Ah, that's all this game is. It's a tech tree with some worker placement. It is fantastic. And every game plays out differently. I love that. Yes. The starting techs are always the same, but then they start branching out into yeah. tech. Every game, mm -hmm. yeah. that branched out tech is going to be different, and it just makes it really fun. Like, I I really wouldn't mind if the expansion was just like, more techs. And then sure. they stuck them there, and I'd be like, yeah. thank you, please. Yep. And keep playing the game. Or if they had a box that said, add color and beauty to the game. Mm. That one probably won't happen. No. Yeah. <laughs> you want too much. <laughs> You flew too close you to the sun. You line, <laughs> vassal. <laughs> you flew too close to the sun. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I gotta try this again. It's been too long. It has, right? Yeah. I enjoyed it a lot, I but know, I need to play it again. Too. I do wonder if it would uh, make an appearance in my top 100 if I play it a lot. I was thinking the same thing, yeah. All right, the People's Choice, number 20, has been on the list for 12 years. For four years in a row, it was number one. Okay. Now it's 20. Well, things that fade. Those four years were uh, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Uh, the one where a clue you get is 2020. Pandemic. That is correct. Oh, wow. Okay. Also, it is number 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How weird. That is a little odd. At least it wasn't 24. Mm. Anyway, um, Pandemic, what are we supposed to say about this? Fantastic. People still like it. This is one of the... Uh, Gateway-esque games or family games that still is going strong. Although I have to say, when it came out, it didn't explode immediately. But there was not very many copies when it first came out. Yeah. I remember, I remember playing it. I remember buying this the week it came out at the local game store that's no longer there. Really? Yeah. Like, the week it came out, when it showed up there, mm -hmm. I don't know why, even, because, I mean, it looked cool, and I liked the idea. I thought it sounded interesting, and I was already into co-op games, sure. you know, but this was one of the earlier of this kind of wave of co-op games. This is yeah. one of the earlier ones. But, yeah, I don't think I've ever been someone on the cutting edge of, like, something that's going to be big. Right. Like, I'm rarely like, <laughs> oh, yeah, let me pick this up, and then it becomes really big in a couple of months. This is the only one. But, I mean, it, it didn't get a lot of buzz initially. It got, it was it got slow. buzz. People it were like, it's good. Build. And then it started going, rah, 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 and then it just was huge. Yeah. Then it was nominated for the Spiel des Jahres, and it didn't even win, I don't think. I don't know. I don't remember. I don't, I don't No, we would know so. if it won, it would be on the box. That's true. And then it got republished, new look, new artwork, continued growing, growing from there. Yeah. I think a lot of it was just the fact that that first printing was pretty small. But, yeah, yeah I mean... Who, who would know that it would become the sensation that it did? All right, so that's your number 20, Pandemic. Also, thank you, Carlos. Woo, 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 woo. Weep, 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 weep. Weep. My number 19. <laughs> Were you running out of batteries over well, you know, I wanted to. My number 19 is a solo game, a solo only game. I know I get... Uh, Getting ready to judge people here. Judge judge away. This is um, 
Oh! I'm prepared! This is a game with Where a... Dice Tower, get out my... Yeah, right. Where was that? In my pocket? I got big pockets. You cannot lie. <laughs> <laughs> this is a game with a unique theme, although it is actually a game that is built off of a previous game that had a different theme. My number 19 is Final Girl. So, the idea oh, behind Final known. Girl is that you are playing as the final girl in a slasher movie, right? So it uses a lot of the tropes of the slasher movies, mostly of the 80s and 90s. You know, things like Friday the 13th and uh, Halloween and uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, those types of things. And it uses that theme in a very, very clever way where it's a card and dice driven game. There is a fair amount of luck. Anytime you have cards and dice like this, you have to be aware of that. But it's such a fast game and it's so smart. It's modular. You pick a location and you pick a uh, like a like a, a, a theme, basically. A killer. A killer and a location. And you can put them together. Yeah. I don't know anything about this game. Yeah. Are there other girls in the game and, and dudes who get killed on the way? Absolutely, yeah. So you are kind of, in in those slasher movies, you know, the last one surviving. The one that survives the killer is usually known yeah, as the, the innocent, final girl. Well, the right. pseudo innocent Usually, person. right. But all of the little yellow, do you, they, can you see them on there? There's little. Are there any little yellow meeples? Nope. Okay, wow. There's a couple right there. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. those are victims, right? Those are victims. And so you've oh, got a pool of victims. Oh, I know what they're doing the legs. They're about to die. Yep. And basically, whenever the killer gets those victims, it rises their bloodlust, which makes them stronger and harder to, to defeat. <laughs> and it kind of builds up their their uh, abilities. And you're trying to keep the terror level down so that you're rolling more dice. And it's I'm just... saying, is it possible to win the game and have more than just the final girl be alive? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Oh. And you also are trying to save, uh, you're trying to take victims to save and when you do that, you kind of power up your final girl. And it, it, when you get enough victims uh, or saved people, you flip over a card and get some extra kind of boon or something like that. Really clever game. Like I said, a neat modular system, a fantastic theme. Um, there's all kinds of new stuff coming out. The, the season two is coming in right around the corner. I'm very excited for more final girl. My number 19 of all time. That's high, Mike. It is. You. This game is... You really love good. this. Wow. Really good. All right, my number 19 also has a lot of content for it that you can mix and match. Mm. But this is uh, not a cooperative game. Not so, certainly not, not, you know, something you can do like that. This is a fighty fight game. Ooh, punchy punch. Punchy punch, fighty Kicky fight. Kicky kick. Kicky kick. Are mm. there different IPs involved? Oh, you know it. Slap this it is slap. finally time for Unmatched. Unmatched. There we That's go. That's right. Is my number 19. Mm-hmm. With the best one being right there on your screen, Cobble and Fog, but don't discount the others. That except, is your favorite? Except for Buffy the Vampire. You can discount <laughs> that one. Uh huh. Do you not like Buffy because of the characters? I don't, yeah, I don't care about Buffy. I don't know about Buffy. Those, okay. those Buffy fans are, are fierce. I don't They're care. Fierce. Buffy fans. Just like Kevin, the, the, uh, the, the membership gifting person. My goodness. He's a big Buffy fan. I love Buffy the Vampire Slayer. No, I've never seen Buffy, so I don't know that one. Everything else, based on literature, based on uh, characters from history, based on famous people, like Bruce Lee, you know? Mm-hmm. Or now Marvel. They they have a line of Marvel-based ones going on. It doesn't matter if you don't care about Marvel, you know, or you feel saturated with it. Try some of these other ones. This game is fantastic. Now, it is inspired by the old, what is it, Duel Masters? Is that what it was? Uh, Epic Duels. Epic Duels, that's it. Epic Duels. Star Wars Epic Duels is the system that this came from. Because it's from restoration games. That's what they do. But I think they did a fantastic job updating it, cleaning it up, making it interesting and tight. And they've been able to keep it up, man. They have. With so many different characters, so much content, wonderful head-to-head game, one of my favorites, obviously. And I can't wait for them to just keep on well, feeding the app the system. is about to come out. That's true. Uh, so let me ask you this. What is the next thing announced? I don't even know. The Marvel ones are coming. There's two more. Mm-hmm. Right. And I don't know after that. There's two more Marvel ones, though. There are, yeah. So we're getting Black Widow, Black Panther... Squirrel Girl, maybe? Yeah, there's something Row, or I can't remember what it was. There's what like they were one called. that has like Teen Spirit, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then another one that is for Queen and Country or for something like that, and mm-hmm. that's got Black Widow, like spies and stuff got like it, that. Got it, got yeah. it. Yeah. 
Awesome stuff. I love this game. So, so good. Thank you, Made My Man. And a shout out to my by far favorite country in the world, Sweden. Mm, Sweden is sweet. It is. And then Luzik, um, who picked my 100% number one favorite country in the world, Slovakia. Woo. I was one of the people who said they like Z the best, but I can't remember who, and it doesn't matter. Mm. My number sus. 19 that person is sweet. has sus. also been on the list for three years and debuted at 19 when oh it my. came on. This is a game that looks like a kid's game, and in fact, I played it with my kids, but it's a fantastic game, and I am playing the video game that it was based on right now. I played it during lunch. The game being Final Fantasy Tactics, and this game being a oh. Adventure Tactics, which makes it only four away from Ascension Tactics. Mm. If you name your game Tactics, you have a good chance of me liking it. Tom's in. Tom's in. That is very interesting. Uh, but man, do I like Adventure Tactics. I... I like to love leveling up the battle. So it's a deck builder, combat game, hmm. and then in between every battle, you level up. So you can add cards from a new class or better cards for your class. And you, then you're customizing your deck slowly. And then once you have a couple levels of basic classes, you can go to a, a, a more specialized class like Paladin or, you know... Necromancer. Necromancer or Beastmaster. Beastmaster? Beastmaster. You get a wolf. You know. So How have I not played this? Yeah, I don't I'm know if you like dummy. it. I think you might like it. It's Some people think it's a little too easy to go oh, through. Oh, it's easy? Yeah. No, I don't believe in easy I games. enjoyed it. I only played the one game with you, but I really did like it. I'll tell you what, I think 50% of the fun is in between rounds of leveling up. Sure, Because sure. you sit there and go, and not only that, but the, the game lets you level up even beyond that because every time at the end of a mission you beat the bad guy, mm -hmm. depending on how you beat them, they will drop rewards, which again are cards that go in your deck. Okay. That's just that's, that's, that's a neat. fun concept. Mm -hmm. Is this you know, for kids, though? It, no, it just, it's just that the theme is a very family-friendly one. Okay, it screams children's game. It really does, but it's more than that. So, that is my number nine. Teen. Teen. <laughs> All right, People's Choice number 19. Get this. Was last year nineteen? Mm -hmm. The year before that, nineteen. 19. The year before that, twelve. Okay. Okay. And then eighteen. 19. Then twenty-one. Sixty. Sixty-four. All right. What's your clue for this one? All right. This is a slightly outside the box clue. I'll say salsa. Concordia. Concordia. Yeah. Oh, that was very fast. Mm -hmm. The oddly named expansion. Although I know there's a really good reason for it that nobody who buys it will ever understand. Mm. I could have said Super Ugly Cover, but that would have been actually been covered about 10 too, of the ones we're going vague. over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Concordia, which is not particularly a pretty game, actually. It is um, not. But it has that mechanism that we often talk about and we all like, where you're playing cards from your hand and then picking them up and playing them again. Mm -hmm. You can't take them back until you play a card that gives them all back to you, right? Except in this one, you're also constantly getting new and better cards, too. Yeah. And the cards are about moving ships around and building towns and getting resources. It has a very clever resource collection where you're turning over tiles um, or, or cities and then eventually someone's gonna be like nah I want the stuff and flip them all back over right right I right. really like that mechanism has a lot of different expansion and maps it's a, it's the modern day power grid in some sense you that's know, a good that. approx that's a that's a good comparison mm. it does feel like the modern day power grid okay I can this is a good game have you played this Mike I, I still haven't played it this is a really? good this is a good hero game this is I one like I can almost guarantee you I'm sure like. I'd like it yeah. everything I've heard is like yeah I like that this idea I like game, that idea yeah mechanically this is uh, just off center enough to be like Something you can draw comparisons to yeah. that will feel different. Okay. It's I not in my to top 100, it. but I do like it a lot. I think it's an excellent yeah, me game. Me too. Me too. So, People Choice number 19. Also, thank you, Josh, for the super chat. And Kevin again, who gave out like 100 memberships. No kidding. Josh is sweet. <laughs> Oh boy, my number eighteen. My number eighteen. This is an older don't game. Don't apologize, Michael. Oh, I'm not apologizing. Apologize. No, no. This, this. So I don't need this. You won't need that. Got it. Um, although, you will need this. Actually, this this is uh, this is yourself. reminiscent of a very important component in this game. As a matter of fact, it could be a dice tower, depending upon what a version hammer. you get. But number eighteen is a fantastic push your luck closed economy auction game by the master of auction games, Dr. Reiner Knizia. My number 18 is a game that is coming out very soon. They're on the boats right now with a beautiful looking new version that we've seen some early uh, editions of and they look great. You know what this is yet? Coming from 25th century games, my number 18 is Ra, Ra, 
You're raw, right. Raw. Yeah. Wow, that actually hurt my leg. As well as should. Yeah, as well as should. You get what you deserve there. No. It is on the boats. I just got the. It is. They just did the Kickstarter update, and they I got very did. excited. I very rarely get excited about stuff. Yeah. This is one of the games, by the way. That's a World Series of board gaming <laughs> championship. Ooh, there really? you go. This is one that I hope makes one of the final rounds because this I would be too. really oh fun gosh. to watch. Raw has so many things mm. going for it. It has, like I said, that great closed economy where you're bidding also on bidding power in future yep. turns, yep. which is brilliant, right? Sometimes you'll take a substandard lot to get a better bidding token for later, right? Yes, so I will. The, 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 when you choose to call raw or not call raw can be a huge uh, decision space in the game. Goading other players into doing things that they maybe shouldn't do. There's a lot of above table uh, stuff going on and there's, you know, it's like, ah, oh, you know, what are you going to do? What are you looking for? Everything's kind of open information. You can see what they're, what they're going for, what they're not going yeah. for. Do they have a Nile tile? Don't, don't they have one? The what Nile are their tile. monuments? All those kinds of things. Such a good game, and it definitely has held up over the test of time. I just I've played this multiple times this year, actually. Really? Yeah, I'm just I'm so excited to get this new edition uh, because I have actually I've never owned a physical copy of Raw. I've always either played other people's copies. I have the app. I've played the library copy multiple times, but I'm excited that this will be my first physical version of it because it looks Man, so I, beautiful. I want you to get your copy, but if it got lost, I'd be like. <laughs> Sorry. Why? Because you're, you're just, I don't know. Anyway, uh, let me ask why? you. Why? Terrible. Why? What? Like the whole boat? No, just Mike's copy. Oh, be, why? Because of the. Because uh, you never had a physical copy. That's true. And that's then the be, I would sit in the library and be like. first first one of Raw? Like the first version I played? The first one you owned, yeah. Or oh, the, the OG. It. Come on, man. The OG? Yeah. The Uber Play one? Yes. I had the Uber play one. Mm. The, we don't talk about Uber yeah. play. We don't talk about Uber. So let me ask you this, Mike. Yes. Who's better, Katala or Kinesia? Um, boy, that's a weird question. Let me um, ask you the same question. Go ahead. Who's better, Katala? Katala! <laughs> I don't care what the rest is. <sighs> it could be literally anything. I it probably... could have been Katala or your papa. I would like probably Kitala. slightly lean to Kinesia, but man, they're both they're both geniuses. They're both geniuses. You know, One of them design. is about to be a dead genius. <laughs> what? You what? Just change your mind. <laughs> mm. All right, let's go, to Z's. let's go to Z's choice here. What on earth? Okay, my number 18 is a Katala game. Um, is it really? No, I would have been great, though. <laughs> Can you ask me in like three games from now? Is it a Kinesia game? Because that would also be that hilarious. That would be, be good. Great. No, it's not. It's a Tom Lehman game. Tom Lehman, who is also a very smart man, yeah, makes very interesting, complex oh, games with few moving pieces. Ah, You're putting it up this high? This is a modern classic. It is not as good as Race for the Galaxy, sorry. I think it's better than Race for the Galaxy. Well, obviously, because Race for the Galaxy, you didn't even make your top man, 100, I think. I think this game is just so I I mediocre. Just I think this, this game is so mediocre. Res Arcana is the game, folks. I really think this game does a lot. Go ahead. No, I'm waiting for you to make a good point. Oh, <laughs> Here, you better take you can this put back. that down. Yeah, you can work. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I think this game does a lot with very few moving parts. You, you, in this game, if you want to play the advanced mode or whatever, you draft a deck of cards at the beginning. It's like eight cards. Mm-hmm. Ten cards, eight cards, I don't it's know really what it is. Small, it's really small, yeah. yeah. You shuffle those, you have a deck of cards, and then you have a character that you are, like that duelist or whatever. That's all you have. Yeah, there's some common buildings you can draft, and there are also cards that you can purchase. But you are using this very small deck of cards, and your character, pretty much, to race to ten victory points. That's it! But, man, gears within gears, combos through the roof. The push and pull of how you utilize everything. The tension you can cut with a knife. You know what this makes me think of a little bit? This a feels knife. to me... Yeah, I, I, many games make me think of knives <laughs> and, and other uh, sharp weapons. Uh -huh. But this is kind of like, to me, Dune Imperium, the card game. No. It has that tension. Yep. Go ahead, yeah. slap it. Yeah, not for no. me. No. Slap for me. it one time! 
We need the special. We need right when I hit it, Roy hits. So I guess you know what effect. this game reminds me more yeah. of than Doom Imperium, <laughs> and I have not put a lot of thought into. We this. still have the. Uh, it reminds me more of Glory to Rome than it does. Is Glory that to Rome is also a good game. It, I, it, I prefer Glory to Rome to this because to me, <laughs> so Res, Arcana, Res Arcana is find the combo and exploit it. Kind of kind of try to find the broken combo and exploit it type of a thing. And I I like that better with the chaos of Glory to Rome than I do with this. But okay. that's just my, yeah. you know, this whoops on Glory to Rome. I like yeah, this that's, better. That's fine. Yeah, that's I fine. really do I enjoy the fun game Quake too. It's, it's, I don't know. There's something about the minimalism here that makes my, uh, my wannabe minimalist heart happy. Mm. All right. Thank you, Christopher, for the super chat. Whoop, 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 whoop. All right. Number eighteen. As you all know, I despise Euros with a passion. Oh, you do. Uh, but this was once as high as my number four. It was. Now you hate it. Yeah, pretty much. It was 13 last year. It is so much worse. Now, I still really like this game. What although kind of I game don't, is it? I don't drink wine or have the wine box. This is Viticulture. Wow, okay. Now, I want to be clear. This is Viticulture with bits of Tuscany thrown sure, in. Sure, sure. <laughs> because without Tuscany, it would probably still make my top 100, but it would probably be in the 80s, 90s. What's okay. your thing? What's your combo there, Tom? The, the four-season board. I yeah. don't want to play without it. For sure. Yes. That's not in Viticulture or Viticulture Essential. Mm -hmm. Now, the other stuff I like, the buildings, I think, are in Viticulture Essential. The buildings, like the orange cards? Yeah. Or no, the maybe structures? They're in, they're in Tuscany. They're in Tuscany. They're in Tuscany. I almost always play with the structures. I always play with Mamas and Papas, but that is an that is essential. An, that that is essential. essential. And I always yeah. play that you can sell your vineyards, which is also an essential. Yeah, as is oh, the, really? as is the Grande so. Worker, yeah. Oh, the, well, the, no, grand the Grand Day Worker is, that's is been a, a rule earlier. change they made. Right. Without that rule, Viticulture is not even in my top 500. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that was such to. a huge game changer. you mm -hmm. got to go Grande. Yep. So, but that four, that four season map, I really love that. Mm -hmm. I really do. I like the little area control thing, but I also like having four different seasons rather sure. than just two. I had to condense all my stuff. And I, to the point that I had to make a very hard, difficult call and just ax the original board. Wow. Like, I don't even have it anymore. I just have the big four-season board. Yeah. And like you said, a few things. Certainly the ones you mentioned are some of the best ones. Cheese, get that out of my face. Don't they like They don't the even cheese. publish that no, anymore, No, the fromage. Right? No, they haven't for a while. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they can, that one. Mm -hmm. All right, I got... For the next People's Choice number yeah. 18, I got yeah. two really easy clues. Mm, smells good. I'm trying to think of a harder clue. Mm. All right. I have two easy clues. Pick one or two. Two. Loki. Oh, it wasn't as easy as I thought. One. <laughs> Healy. Oh, Blood Rage. <laughs> yes. There you go. There you go. The Loki strategy. Three. <laughs> yeah. Lang. Lang. Number Got one. It. Got <laughs> it. Blood Rage. Yggdrasil. Okay, Different this game. is no surprise. Blood Rage, the most popular. The other two have shown up on the People's Choice already, but this is the one people like the best. Yeah. Um, it's a great game. Has drafting in it, combat. Um, Not as dying good as, is good for you. Not as good as Midgard. Mm. <laughs> that is funny that Midgard has got no boost out of this. Oh, Midgard, at all, yeah. Midgard was the game it was based on. In fact, when Eric told me he was remaking Midgard, I was like, eh, yeah, you sure? sure? I like Midgard, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but then when you change the name to Blood Rage, which, as a heads up, is a great name for it a game. It is. It's a fantastic a name, yep. Or a child. Mm -hmm. Blood Rage. I still like my father's work. That was a great. That's that is great. really um, good, yes. But anyway, Blood Rage, fantastic game. The people like it as number 18. It was 12 last year, so it's sliding. It was once as high as four. I believe um, it. But yeah, still pretty high, Blood Rage. Good. My number 17 is a crossover with Z for sure. You know it, baby. Perhaps, I don't know if it was on Tom's list, mm -hmm. and I don't no, know if it was on... I'm almost sure this would be I on people's. I was about to say, I don't know if it's on Tom's list, and I don't care. No, no. Look, I mean, I can at I least act like I care. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was on the People's Choice list as well. This is a worker placement game that is set in a delightful woodland world, by, illustrated by, actually, 
This is the first time I paid notice of Andrew Bosley as an illustrator and this an artist. This is not in my top 100. Okay, yeah. Or uh, 400. Well, then you are way off base. My number 17 is Everdell. What a lovely, lovely worker placement game that does a lot of things that I like. First of all, it kind of takes that Seven Wonders thing we talked about before, where sometimes if you build a structure, it's going to allow you to get another either critter free into your into your into yes. your kind of forest. I like that being able to kind of build towards something else. I also really like what throws some people off the first time they play it, which is that there's really no set round structure in the sense that you could be in a different season as other players at the table. Yeah, ish, I yeah. actually do like that. I think that that is a little more impactful than yeah, maybe. Yeah, you it. like tapestry for the same reason. The same reason, yeah. I, I, I feel like it just kind of adds some flavor and spice to the game that you don't know or always mm. see in these types of games. I really do wish they had called those things not seasons. I get that, yeah. Seasons that. are fixed to all of us at the same time. They live in the same town, yeah. all these critters, you know what I mean? Yeah, but we're, we're looking at these people at different yeah, times. Yeah, but you're like, so how's it going? I'm like, man, I'm still in the spring. I'm so cold. And you're like, what do you mean it's summer? <laughs> it's like we are, we are a... a, a um, Christopher Nolan movie. No, we're like a narrator, and it's like, now we're going to take a look and see what the badger is doing. The badger is in spring. Oh, well, let's go see what the hedgehog is. So it's a Wes is. Anderson movie. Yeah, let's go I'm see what the hedgehog God. is doing. The hedgehog Fantastic is Mr. over there. The hedgehog is on the river barge. It's summertime, and they're going to go to this festival. Okay. It's a beautiful game. It has a like lovely this. production. It has an outrageously overproduced essential edition that I have and spent a good 17 or 18 hours trying to... Good. Organize. Nice. I'm exaggerating. That slightly. big old box, though, yeah, or yeah. something. I haven't and even. Ours is still sitting in that right. room. The first person to touch it has to organize it. And I also I'm have not it. have not stickered. Like over it. And I will not sticker it. <laughs> My number seventeen is Everdell. Lovely, lovely game. I I like Everdell. No, I'm fine. Not I like Everdell fine, but it's that's all it is to me. Is it's fine. Now, okay. I haven't touched it as much as you guys have. Like with all the expansions. The expansions are good. But that big box was swaying me over because I really. <laughs> yeah. It's not you're not you're not feeling it, right? Mm. I mean, the box. I'm really not. Yeah. That was the first box. I mean, they. I've been getting like that's ah, annoying. That's so big. Anachrony almost pushed me over the level, but the Everdell <laughs> one, I was like, stop. Yeah. This is too far. <laughs> You've gone. Yeah, there's a couple of uh, expansions in there. The publishers never stop to think if they should. Mm. There's New Leaf and Mistwood in there. Yeah. That we have not messed with yet, but they're part of that big old box. You know? I've messed with uh, Mistwick because that has the new solo mode. The the new oh, yeah, I, oh I, with I, the spider with or the spider nightweave. It's a really good solo. It sounds like okay. a horror expansion. Night it's a little weave. frightening. Yeah, it's a little frightening. <laughs> very very frightening. <laughs> Final girl nightweave. <laughs> My number wherever we are is a great game. Yep, it is. Mm -hmm. um, These. It's a cooperative game. It has been on Mike's list already, but I really like it. Uh, the game is honestly probably too easy as a cooperative game until you throw in some pizzazz. Okay. But it's quick, it's fun, and it does one thing that no other co-op that I can readily think of does. And that is let you be everybody. Wow, you got it up this high. Good for you, man. I like this game a lot. I, thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. I, I try to please you. It's my only that. pursuit. <clears throat> All right, well. Rising 5, Runes of Shut Up, Mike. <laughs> Astros. That's how it's pronounced. Uh-huh. Shh. That's right. Mm -hmm. Judge not. Uh -huh. I'll judge if I want. <laughs> Rising mm -hmm. 5 is a great game. It is sort of, it has a central mechanism which is akin to Mastermind, mm -hmm. you are playing cards to move these characters around different locations and take actions with them. Discovering things, attacking baddies, collecting some weird green glowy energy, and then using that stuff to, well, play Mastermind. Yeah. You're trying to figure out a puzzle. This is app assisted. You can play without the app. If you have a sucker who's right. going to sit there. Like Tom. Tom would play that role. We need that's what we need to do. Ooh, I would play what cool. role? Yeah. You'd be you'd play the role of the app. Yeah. Where all I, you're doing you is basically would. like you, all you do is you sit there while other people play and you go like this one's wrong and this one's wrong. <laughs> that's literally like all you do. Eight minutes. That's literally it. Or I, so I would do it. Uh-huh. I would spice it up, but what would you do? I don't know. I would it's a little light the ones that are wrong. He'd throw fire. smoke bombs, yeah, right? right? You'd be making it your old, No! <laughs> 
<laughs> have a cape. <laughs> anyway, no, the app is fantastic. And again, the app runs ever for you and, and keeps track of how long you've been playing, which it is does. how I know, which I know for very few games, really, I can estimate how long the game took. <laughs> but I know for a fact in this game, it's like 30 minutes, yeah. 33 minutes. It's amazing. I yeah. really do like it. Uh, what are you laughing at, Tom? Says the most important mechanic in Rising 5 is trying not to fall asleep. Oh, wow. I like the game fine, well, so I'm not even agreeing there. I just, that's funny. <laughs> I really like it a lot, obviously. Yeah. Very, yeah. very fun. I thank you, Patrick. Brazil, my new favorite country in the world. Brazil's oh, the best. All right, my number Obrigado. 17. Let's continue <laughs> on the heavy Euro list. In fact, this was 19 last year, so this one's going up a bit. Mm. Um, and the highest ever was was 9. It's been on the list for seven years straight mm. and it's a crossover with mike and the people and it will never ever be on z garcia's list and that is a feast for odin why do no, you have baby. it up this high i didn't I realize love you liked it this, this game. much i really do okay um i like worker placement but i like and that z made fun of me mm -hmm. earlier when i talked about the plethora of choices but i really like that mm -hmm. i like how in feast for Odin i can be like you know what this game i'm gonna raise cattle and have babies and get these really big giant blocks to put over or one where I'm like, you know, I'm going to go out and get these really weird shaped objects and fill them in. Yeah. Or whatever it is. Oh. I just have fun trying out different stuff. whaling or whatever. Yeah. Roll the now, dice. I don't, I, actually, I, I never stuff? whale. Yeah. You never do the, the, it's the too dice. too lucky for me. What is that? That is amazing. That's your player that board. That is Tetris. That's is it just random like tools and that cape and stuff? Mm -hmm. no. horseshoe? Well, nothing's random, but you need to fill in your whole thing. Because every spot you don't fill in is a negative point. And see that, you see yeah. the little coins, those little silvers showing. Yeah. That's the income you're going to get during income phases, too. So. Yeah, and you're going to fill in, you fill in the cracks with those. And there's blue tiles and green tiles. And the green tiles can never touch another green tile. But the blue tile can touch a blue tile. They're more versatile. They're the best. Around. They're the versatile. Got it. Yes, they're the versatile. All right, so great, great game. That picture did not sell it to me. All right, number 17 for the people has been on the list for seven years. The highest it ever has been has been eight, but this game has almost since it was released been ranked, liked, and played more than the game it's based on. That's your clue. Consistently, everyone this likes game this been smaller game on. better than the bigger game it's based okay, on. Okay, 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 okay. Bang the dice game, Tom. That's actually true for bang the dice game, but that would not be seventeen on most people's list. <laughs> there it is, baby. <laughs> you know who we're talking about. Um, man, it's a smaller one. You're saying it's smaller. It's a two-player version of the much. Oh, 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 Seven Wonders Duel. That is correct. Yep. Seven Wonders Duel. Yeah, Seven Wonders Duel is the anomaly there, isn't it? It is. I think Splendor Duel, we'll see how it does. That's true. I would not be surprised. Mm -hmm. But it was actually Man, nine I last year. I yeah, like that. It was good. It was nine last year on the People's Choice, so it's a, that's a, somewhat of a drop, right? Mm -hmm. But it's still very popular. So good. Almost it is. more well known than the base game at this point, I think. It's getting there. It's getting there. But like everywhere, Board Game Geek, which one do you like better? Duel. Yeah. And that's, like you said, very rare. I think it's cool. Especially though. when the original game is a super blockbuster. Yeah. It's not true. that like the first game was like, eh. Yeah, and no. then you come up with a hit based on that. You know what I mean? Right. No, the first game was really a big hit. And they went back to the drawing board and made a two player game that's somehow different enough, but better. It's unbelievable to me. It is. And two player drafting, such a smart way to handle so good. it. Yep. Whew. That's your number 17. Schedule. Come on, okay, you have, you have 20 seconds. Making Roy scramble. I get 20 seconds? Well, I get 15, so. Well, no, no. Here's the thing. If you go back and look at how, who talked about their game the longest, it's definitely you. You went into like deep description on one game that we were talking about today. You're like, and then the rock. Oh, no, you comment. You're 15 seconds or 20 are up. Here we go. <laughs> my number 16. I feel, like, I feel like I'm playing a board game with these guys, and they're complaining about my AP when they take 45 minutes. All right, my number 16. Maybe not Z. I'm you don't sorry. Have AP. I feel, I feel oh, pretty don't have AP. I'm, I'm believing it. Tom also didn't have AP. All right. My number 16 <laughs> is a fantastic, heavy to me, to me, a heavyweight Euro game, although people will say medium. It is Paladins of the West Kingdom. Paladins is light medium. 
Yes. No, this is a heavy Euro game. Yeah, I, know, I consider it a filler. <laughs> <laughs> Super filler. This, to me, was the first of this series that I felt like was a next level in complexity, right? Okay. So Raiders with both expansions, you know, there's a fair bit going on, but it's still like a relatively manageable game. I thought that Architects is a relatively light, medium worker placement yeah. game. Paladins, when I first got this game and I read the rule book and I started playing and, the, and the, the just the number of options and the thinkiness of it and the decision space and, and the different colored workers and all of the different ways you can approach it and having the different kind of attributes. There are so many smart ideas in this game that they shouldn't all work together right. as well as they do and they absolutely do. This is a game that is aided by some of the best iconography in a language independent Euro I've ever seen. Mm. And that is something you can s carry across almost all of the Garfield games. I, I, I'm sorry, Tom. I, I think that- You're not that, sorry, but- uh, Well, I, would, I think that their, their iconography is stellar. Like, I think their iconography is how many times are you having five out of ten? How many times are you having to reference the rule book? Once you once you learn Paladins? Almost never. The thing about their iconography that benefits them is that they reuse it from yes, game to game. They do. And well, so if oh. you are only playing one of these, it's not as good. Okay, I still you're think bringing, it's good. You're bringing outside knowledge, is what I'm saying. I thought some of the I, iconography I, get that. You, I was I'm not just I think Paladins has good iconography, don't get me mm. wrong. But then you said as a system as a whole, and I think it started falling apart a little bit in Wayfair. I agree with that. I did actually say that in the review. I thought that that was the first time that the iconography was like almost a bridge too far because there was so much of it. Here, like they should have written stuff out. Maybe there should have been. Well, there should have been a player aid. But but but, but oh. that's another whole story altogether. You know what? I'm 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 taking Garfield games off my list. There now. you go. No player. Done. Paladins is a spectacular, spectacular Euro game. My number sixteen. My number 16 is one of the best two-player games of all time. No, not that one we just talked about. Another one that I know you're going to agree with me on. This is Targi. Mm. Uh, it was already on my top 100, so yes, I agree with you. That's right. Do it again. My number... Wait, what? 72. I threw the sheet away. It was your 72. Was it? No, I don't know. You think I'm going to care? <laughs> no. uh, Targi's a great two-player <laughs> worker placement game. It's honestly, taking the two-player part out of it, I think it's one of my favorite worker placement games. I think the worker placement game in this great game is, is fantastic. Yeah. It's engaging. It's incredibly tense. The gameplay is not difficult, but there's a nice amount of interaction with all the pieces you can utilize. Yep. You're gathering stuff. You're spending it. You're building a tableau in front of you that's going to score. You're gaining special abilities sometimes, or not, if you just want brute points, you know. Yeah, there's a great soup of flavors in this that I just absolutely adore, and that an expansion, which revitalized it for me with, with a few tweaks, you know, and some interesting new ideas. If you haven't played this and you play two-player games a lot, my goodness, get Targi, play it. Mm -hmm. Thank me later. Send me a check. <laughs> <laughs> my number 16 has been on my list for 10 years. It was 22 last year, so it's gone up, but that's because a new edition of it came out. I know what it is. Go ahead. Summoner Wars 2nd Edition? No. Um, I'm sorry. Too, this is too low for Summoner Wars. <laughs> what? This is 16. It's Kemet. Kemet. Oh, this is oh, too high for Kemet. Wow. Oh, I love Kemet. Tom Vassell. I, you know, I still need to play Blood and Sand. I cannot believe I haven't played this yet. Did we just? Did we not include you when we played it here? No, no you did not. You, as a matter of okay. fact, Success. you invited me. I sat down at the table. I had all my player pieces there. And then you told me to leave. You don't remember this. I really don't. What happened? Why? I'm making this up, Tom. Oh. You didn't do that. <laughs> what? You could have kept going for a while. I was thinking about it. <laughs> I felt bad because you were believing me. Well, because Roy had never played it, so I had to teach it to him. Yeah. That's this, amazing. This is a Roy game for sure. Yeah, and okay, so this picture is not too bad for this game. That that new map is pretty rough. Mm. That man, I really, that still bugs me. The new map is someone needs to make a custom map for Kemet and sell it. I would buy it, um, or at least donate you money to have a copy of this <laughs> custom like a map. play mat or something. That yes, because Kemet's mat's terrible, but the game itself is great. It Technologies, is. monsters, a game that promotes attacking other players. I love attacking other players. It. it, it but doesn't demands. It, yeah, it doesn't give you bonuses for 
just sitting around with a defensive grid. I hate games that do that. And most of these, you know, monsters and stuff on a map, that's what they do. Kemet's fantastic. And other than the map, I like everything else about this expansion. Mm. It has more stuff. Bigger monsters. You can even get the little Cthulhu thing, which I will do, <laughs> even though some people get annoyed about that. But there's also not giant scorpions walking around either, that's so true. I feel like I can do what I want. Yeah. So Kemet, super fun game. Wow. My number 16. Wow. Yeah, but it was as high as number 5 at one point. Yeah, no, no, I know you love it. I know you do. All right, 16 for the people. Here's your clue. This has been on the list for five years, and mm. it's gone up every year. Last year was 29. The clue is uh, debt. Brass? Be more specific. Birmingham. It's what is Brass Birmingham. Oh, yes. come on. Give me yeah. a break. Yeah. Give me brass a break. Birmingham. What is Brass Birmingham? <laughs> All right. I think it's the point. Yeah, yeah. I'm all about points. I don't care about France. <laughs> now, notice Brass, the other Brass. Um, Lancashire. Lancashire. Nowhere on this list at all because even though people like it, and every oh. time I mention it, people are like, oh, we like both. Yeah. This one gets played so much more Look than the other. Board, yeah. Though. Can you think of a time that a redo of a game, like a new edition of a game, made such an impact on that game? Because I can't. Like, Brass Birmingham well, was a, was a well thought that, of there's game. There's one that's done better, more, and that was Android Netrunner. But this was, is like number two on BGG. Well, sure, but I'm talking about no, yeah, sheer no, numbers. That's, that's oh, the Android okay. Netrunner. Netrunner, okay. Android Netrunner. But yeah. yeah, you're right. Okay. The Brass came out, and everyone was like, that's a pretty good it's game. A good for game. It's a good game. This came out, and people lost their minds. Yes. They're still losing their minds. Cause yes. It's, this is, we have two copies in a Dice Tower library. It's crazy. For and it's a heavy, six years dry old. Euro like this. Oh, and it's no. good. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's spectacular. Oh, yeah, it's a game. But, yeah. but why this one? You know what I mean? No, I mean, I'm serious. But why this one compared to others? Too. Have you played Brass for me? I, he played half a game. Oh, yeah. okay. I got it. I needed to uh, I, shovel I still the remember barf. I'm sitting there, they're teaching me bla Brass. Birmingham and Z's like, can I join? I was like, yeah, you it, almost fell out of your is chair. Is this a yeah, yeah. joke, Z? <laughs> no, I wanted to try it. You know, I like knowing if I like trying this stuff. It's not for me. I also had some. I feel like nobody talks about this usability issues. That board is people, really dark and people, hard to read. People do talk about it, but they it, do. They do. I'll tell you what they don't talk about is Bruno. <laughs> All right, it's definitely on this list. Anyway, yeah. so. Brass Birmingham, the people's number 16. Folks, we're halfway through today's list. Woo! And the time is right. My number 15 is a game that um, almost suffers from its overproduction. Um, Ooh. But it is such a fantastic game. And it's another one of those games that if you see it on the table, you're not going to have any idea on the way the game plays. You're going to think it's a... Troops on a map game, an Ameritrash game, and it is not. This is really essentially a card game where what you're doing with your cards informs what happens on this board made up of different irregular shaped tiles with a bunch of minis on it, depending on the version you get. My number 15 is Monumental, which is such oh. a smart, yeah, okay. really tight design, wow. right? Wow. The and prices just went up on eBay. It's so good. And and Matthew Dunstan, it's a Matthew Dunstan design who does, you know, he'll do little flipping rights. I mean, yeah. Matthew Dunstan is a very versatile designer. This, again, this game looks bigger and more grand in scale than it is. But one of the things I like so much about it, and I've mentioned this before, is that it has a micro-macro feel. Whereas your cards kind of make up the, the micro. I'm, I'm doing things here. I'm triggering a row and a column. All of the cards in that row and column, I'm going to do. They're going to give me resources. They're going to allow me to do things on this bigger board. So it's like, this is the world, and what's in front of me is an inset. You know, if you look at, like, maps that have inset things. Yeah. That's how I feel when I'm playing this game. It's like, what I'm doing here is going to allow me to be the puppet master over here. Mm. And it doesn't have, like... A lot of it has some direct conflict, but not a lot. It's really? mostly like rushing to places to get resources before other people. There is some um, area majority and things like that, but it's not just punchy fighty the most. Each civilization that you play as 
has a particular mm. thing that they're going for. And some are more aggressive than others. But okay. there are some that aren't in, interested in combat at all. They're trying to develop science. Yeah. Or they're trying to, to, to get new technologies. Do you have your own deck? You, you have your own, oh, absolutely. Yeah, you have your own deck and then there's a I shared like market. Games, you have your own deck. You I'm have your own deck and there's a shared market and you have a leader that has a special ability to pet, that, that is thematic <laughs> to the... I gotta try this to game. The, the, it's really, really good. Again, it's one of those... Only on Kickstarter type things, and FunForge has had significant issues yeah. with the follow-up, uh, you know, expansion. I'm still waiting on it, but boy, this game is fa fantastic. Tom turned me on to this one, um, and I love it. My number 15, my I tell mental. you, it was very different than I was expecting it to be. That picture yeah. and the map, you're like, war You're game! expecting Kemet. Mm -hmm. You yeah. are. You right. really are. And it's the furthest thing from Kemet. Yeah, it's good, right? Well, Kemet is good, too. <clears throat> Different good. Uh, you don't even hate Kemet, you I weirdo. Don't. They I did don't. Like uh, they did incendiary. They did okay. do a version without the minis, but you had to order it from Kickstarter, and I don't see a lot of those. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, my number 15 is, as it should be, mm. a Katala game. Okay? There we go. You gave us a heads up on this from earlier. I did. You did. Is it Cyclades? Because that'd be weird being so that close to That would be Kemet. great. No, it's not. Cyclades, I don't think, makes a top 100. I like it, but not not this high. No, this is one of those that gets played a lot of conventions. I'm always happy to pull this one out and show it to four or five people. Try to think what you bring out at conventions. I've got Abyss. a bunch of co-designers, by the way. That's definitely oh. one of them. Jamaica? Jamaica, yeah. Ah. Jamaica is, uh, is uh, Sebastian Pauschen, really Malcolm Graff, and Bruno Catala. Mm -hmm. So three people designed this. I don't want to just give credit to Catala. He has two co-designers. One of which, at the very least, the Bastion Pauschen, I think, is a great designer. Malcolm mm -hmm. Braff, I don't know from many other things. But this game is a little racing game in which you are racing around the island one time. It's one lap, collecting gold and booty and shooting cannons at other people and stealing their stuff. Drawing cards when you land on specific buried treasure cards. This all managed by rolling two dice at the beginning of each round. If you're the one who rolled them, setting them in a morning and afternoon order. You're the captain now. So like three and six. I could say three, then six, or six, then three. And everyone plays a card from their hand that has a morning action and an afternoon action. That's it. It's so clean. It's so easy to teach. Yep. It's fun. It's in your face for sure. Yeah. And yes, if you are someone who despises confrontation... You're you're gonna have confrontation. Yeah, this is the game. That's not the game for. I'm this. surprised there's no two. There's no Jamaica two yet. Doesn't it feel like there should be by now? Or, or like a sequel or like to Jamaica, a spin off or, or yeah. something. Yeah. yeah, you're right. The etymology of this game is really weird too, right? Wasn't this a contracted game by some type of a corporation? Sort of. So the company who made this, their first game, which has just been remade. Was like for an insurance company. That's what so I thought. It was an animal themed game. Yeah. This was the second one that they did. Yes. Um, but this one was much more widely available. Got it. Yes. Although when I first got it, it was not that widely available, mm -hmm. but it was so popular yeah. that they did another reprint and then they spun off to just become a board game company. Right. That is. I don't what know I if think. this was for something though, Mike. Okay. The first one was for that. Got it. Like a Dutch animal insurance company <laughs> right. or something. That's what I thought. Um, yeah. And okay. I did not know that that was being reprinted. Is that being reprinted? I thought for sure we talked about it under a different name. I'm almost okay. Okay. I'll positive. Have to, I'll have to look that up I'm because if so, up. I'll be very upset that my very rare copy is no longer going to be very rare. Mm. Got it. Big issues with that. Mm. Jamaica is fantastic. Thank you. Oh, I'm also very happy that our copy of Jamaica... Someone last time we went to Jamaica yeah. got some Jamaican coins and put them in the car. Yes. I know somebody else on the just this last cruise that bought a bunch of Jamaican coins to put in their copy. That's funny. Yep. Yeah, that's great. Ben, thank you for the super chat. Yay, Texas, my favorite. Country. Florida's my favorite state. But Texas number two. I can't. I can't. Well, you say can call Texas. it a republic. You can say it's your favorite republic, right? Todd from Rose Rosemount. Did I ever say that right? Rosemount. Anyway, <laughs> favorite mountain. Thank you, Todd, for the super chat. All right, my number fifteen. Debuted on my list seven year, six years ago to a very surprised Z Garcia as my number one. But it has fallen a bit, mostly because I play this I almost exclusively on a an app now. Terraforming Mars? And I'm also Wait. tying this with its very brand new brother, Frosthaven. This is Gloomhaven. Oh, oh, I was thinking of something else. 
I thought this was something else. Okay. Yeah. Haven. It, it, and I'm including Frost Haven in on this pick here because. And Jaws of the Lion? Sure. Hmm. Okay. okay. And the puzzles? <laughs> I was trying to think of another thing. And Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> and Founders of Gloomhaven. And Founders of Gloomhaven. No, and Founders the of Gloomhaven is not included <laughs> the here. The RPG is part of this. And guy. Gloom. No. No. Or Haven. Um, <laughs> That's right, there is a game called Haven. Anyway, or Loomhaven, which yeah. is about a guy just standing over you like, hey. I got a place for you to stay. No, he's no, weaving. He's, he's weaving. weaving. I love that. There should be a game called Loomhaven. Loomhaven. <laughs> a town like full of loomers. It's like the little, there's a game that looks kind of like Gloomhaven, but it's called Loomhaven. It's in the $5 bin cool. and Wall Street. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, this is still 15. It's a fantastic game. It really is. Um, I dropped it a bit just because of the massive setup and teardown. I can't leave it set up at home all the time. I just can't. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I had to to play it for a while. Yes. Yeah. I could leave it set up now. I actually have a table. I can leave things set. Why? Anyhow, it's higher on your list. That's all of right. A sudden. No, but Frosthaven is actually on that table at home for this main purpose. I want to play Frosthaven. I'm going to pull it out and play it. Gloomhaven, yeah. Frosthaven, Gloomhaven, Charles Line. It's an amazing system. It's not for everybody, but immensely popular. So. That's my number 15. I like it a lot. All right. People's Choice 15. Second year on the list. Last year was 72. So it's jumped wow. up quite a bit. Whoa. So my clue here, uh, there's not a lot of clues I can get for this one. So I'll just say um, animals. That's super generic. Everdell? Root? No, we've already had those. That was two guesses, but no to both. How animals. About, how about real animals? Ark Nova. Ark Nova. No. Uh, then I don't know. Uh, this is a game that both of you like a lot. I like it fine. With real animals? With real animals. Mm. How Sauce? about uh, the, the one with the let's otter name, expansion? Let's name some animals in this game. There are bears. Meadow? There are... Yeah, meadow, thanks. There's only like five animals in the game. That's not it, But huh? there's different okay. types of bears. There's different... Cascadia? Yes! Oh, wow, that high! That's... Cascadia is that Modern high! Park. Spiel? I didn't say bear for that reason. That would have been my clue, but then I know no. you would have said bear. Mm. Cascadia, that's pretty high! Pretty it's high? That's 70, huge! 72 to 15. This is a very popular game. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It's, you you see this played the cruise, at the cruise actually. or any of our conventions. This is always out. Yep. Yeah, I, 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 I like this game, but you guys like it more than I do, and the people really <laughs> like this game. There's yeah. five animals in it, right? Yeah, I was right. Five. Yeah, you get, There's a bear, you, an elk. A bear, uh, elk, salmon, salmon, a, a, a hawk, I think. And then a donkey. Don't they another change fox. kind of what their names are by the scoring? Like No. I don't th I don't think they change a name, I don't just think what's out so. of the score. Yeah. yeah. Well anyway, again, really cool game. Beth puts Beth Sobel on top of the world. And you gotta think that they're gonna do an expansion for this just with new animals, right? And maybe even some new I am surprised there's not been an expansion tiles, for Cascadia. Know. That would be pretty oh no, the tiles say what kind of animals can That's go on. That's the issue, there. yeah. I'm so you but can't you really could. change the animals. No, you you could just have different animals that go into that habitat. A new tile with a sixth right? animal. Instead of instead of the salmon going on the pink tile, you have a different pink animal that goes on that tile. No, no, there's a picture of salmon on the uh, tile. Ignore that. It's no. a morphing. It's <laughs> no, morphing. they could have a sequel though mm -hmm. that has the tiles with the animals and is compatible with. You could do that. Ooh, if they have a sequel though, how would they name it? Cascadia, but there's two eyes. <laughs> Instead of what the Cascadia, yes, and then the two yes, big eyes there. Yes, exactly. Cascadidos. Fan Force. Ooh, cas Cascados. Cascados. I hate whatever you guys are saying. <laughs> I don't know what it is, honestly, but I hate it. Cascados. Fourteen, you say? Here we go. My number fourteen is a Ooh. game that has. Probably for me, my favorite writing in a board game, which is so hard to do, and it's not even a game that has a lot of it. It has a little bit in kind of the lead up to, hey, here's the situation you're on, is or it, that, that you have. Is it a little humorous? It's a, it's a little humorous, it's a little sardonic. Something about bones, okay. No, no, no. I know what this is. And it, does it look, would you say that the game mm -hmm. looks like a stereo system? I'd say the game, the game componentry Sorry, looks the game like an old school boombox. Like you should be carrying it like this, <laughs> it really walking does. down the street. I was there when Tom bought this at Gen Con bit. one year, and I'm like, that box looks like it has a like a stereo system. It definitely looks or like, like a, a sci-fi machine or something. It 100 looks like a boombox. My number 14 is unsettled. Um, 
This game to me is such an impressive achievement, and You're on right. top of being an impressive achievement, it's a super fun game. It's a cooperative survival game, mm -hmm. and here's the thing, and 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 this is why I think you know we we Tom and I talked about this when we did the review, why maybe you bounced off it more than I did, um, is that if you play it as a standard. Um, exploration game as a cooperative game where you just go off and do whatever you want, it's probably not going to be as exciting because okay. there's this is particular plan. The way it works is that you have a planet that you have crashed on, right? And it's modular. You can pick any any planet it's going to have, either a desert planet or a spore-filled planet or, you know, a planet where the up is down and down is up. Any number of things could happen. You know, storms are happening, electrical storms. I don't know where that planet is, but I like that concept. Yeah. Up is um, down? Down is up, bad is they good, have, good is bad, they're, fat yeah, skinny. There, there kind of is I'm a planet so like that, that where planet. you're either going to be you know, above the surface or on the surface. Well, anyway, like this tall. it's uh. a really, really clever game where you have to think outside of the box. And, and you, you, know, you can play it solo. I, actually, this is a cooperative game I don't like to play solo as much because I really feel like I need the help of other Oddly people. Oddly enough, I have played this a lot solo. Yeah. <laughs> no, to me, I like having other people because I'm going to approach a problem a particular way, my way. Roy's going to approach it differently. Thanks Camilla's so much, going to right? approach it differently. Tom's going to approach it differently. And sometimes you need right. to look at this a different way because it's not going to be usually a very obvious thing. And also, there are sometimes, well, not sometimes, there are always multiple ways to solve something. And mm -hmm. So just a really smart game with some neat exploration. And again, some of the best writing that I've ever come across that, has, that strikes a great tone between humorous but not cheesy. This is um, sardonic, right? It is I mean. sardonic. Yeah, I love. You are definitely, love, I think, the biggest love. fan of this game. I think it's fantastic, yes, and it I can't wait it. for all more of the planets that are coming to me. Although that's insane, you haven't even played through all the planets you have. There's one planet I haven't played through. You've even no, you've played part of the planet. Don't they have like three in each one? Three different scenarios. Um, that's fair point. Yes, I have at least experienced all of but one of the planets. That's a that's fair point. That's what I'm point. saying. You don't even need more content. No, he I don't. Uh, but don't. Actually, so with my number it. 14, maybe I should shut up. That's right. Tom. Take all the content you want. There we go. My number 14 is Remember unsettled. that when it comes to my 14, give me mercy. This is going up, right, Mike, mm -hmm. for you? Mm-hmm. This is yes. rising Yeah, for this you? is actually up. Thank you for asking. You got it. Up buddy. nine points. Up nine spots. Ooh. He loves it. Right Buy the stock now, folks. All right. My number 14 uh, is a, I guess it's new wish on the list because it replaced my previous one that was always up here somewhere. It's the same game, really, with a different theme and, and cleaner rules. Cooperative as well. Used to be Ghost Stories. Oh, wow. Now I just default because it's the one I've got. It's easier to play to Last Bastion. Still I still haven't played this. Last Bastion. Me neither. Me neither. But I have a hard time because I love Ghost Stories so much. Yeah, Ghost Stories just was a hard one now. to give up, I'll tell you. And I went back and forth. Because that theme, boy, Ghost Stories has a beautiful theme. Mm -hmm. It's a great setting. It's more different, more distinct. Last Bastion was... It's hard to understate how generic it's sort of how generic it made me feel how bad it felt to kind of give up ghost stories for a castle defense. Come on, really? Medieval castle with demons and whatever. Yeah, but it's basically medieval. But the rules here are much cleaner. It's yeah. cleaner. It's easier <clears throat> than... Ghost Stories. It's, okay, I'm you know, glad a lot to of hear that. A, it needs to be. A lot of folks have a very hard time with Ghost Stories and, and getting that game played because it's so punishing. But Last Bastion is easier. It has more variability. There's more character powers in, right in the box. And just streamline some things where now it's a lot more playable, really. You know, Ghost Stories was a game that was a little clunky. It showed its age a little bit. It was a, a Bruno... Um, I'm sorry, a uh, Antoine Boza game that was one of his earlier designs, mm -hmm. an older design. So it was a little rougher on the edges. Last Bastion is great. You're defending this castle. You can either take an action in there, uh, ask assistance of one of the people in there, or fight one of these incoming baddies. That's what you're doing. Run, you know, run through all the baddies, beat the final um, big bad, and win the whole thing. Great cooperative, fun. Some dice rolling, some luck mitigation. Really neat, mechanically robust sound. Really, really enjoy this game. So good. Fast Bastion. Thank you, Anne, for the great super, super yes, chat. Yes, thank Ooh. you. Thank you. Talking thank about you. our ridiculousness and our content. Yes, and Kathleen, sweet. thank you for saying that we're amazing. I appreciate thank all you. the lies. <laughs> um, all right, my number 14. Yeah, so content. This went from 
Last year was 30. The year before that was 167. Oh, my goodness. You mean context? Content. This game has gone up. Oh, a lot of content. Okay. Solely because of the content. And Got also, it. point. Even though people say I talk about this theme too much, it's not in my top 10. Oh, Marvel but 14 United. 14 is still very high. Marvel United. This is what I want in a cooperative oh, game. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. And I, the content is great because it's so plug and play. And unlike Mike, I've actually played with every single thing in Marvel United. Mm. Now, I've not played with every single combination because that's impossible. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's impossible. I think you're, you're well, I don't want to say lazy, but you, you could <laughs> try harder. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's physically impossible. There's too many combos. You wouldn't be able to pull it off. Mm, I don't think it's impossible. It's 100% it's impossible. I think you have a time like cube you can stick me in and freeze me, a time bubble? Anyway, yes. So, yes, people are sick of Marvel. I don't care. I like it. People say it's too easy. First of all, that's only some of the, <laughs> the bosses. Yeah, you're yes. not kidding. Yeah. Uh, you think it's too easy to play against the um, play against Apocalypse or... Mm -hmm. um, who's uh, Even Juggernaut's really hard. Yeah. I don't think he's yeah. particularly fun, but... Uh, there's so much in this game. I get to play it. I'm jazzed about all the new content, but you know what? I'm play also Thanos. I'm also very much willing to wait for all that new content because there's a ton I can play with now. I just mm -hmm. think it's a lot of fun. It's so easy to get out. It's easy to teach. You can really manipulate how hard or easy it is. You can, yeah. There's lots of little variants. We, variants I didn't expect to like, like the blue gold team. That mm -hmm. was fun. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. just it's an interesting game. A lot. I would love to see DC United someday. That would be cool. Um, I would oh love to gosh. see other things in this system. So, you know, they run some systems into the ground, like, uh, like say, a rising game. Um, oh, Jeremiah. Yeah, like, oh, Jeremiah said they oh, just announced. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, they just announced campaign cards. Apparently, campaign I haven't seen Campaign cards that. for Marvel United? Oh, man. This is now my number 13. <laughs> <laughs> gosh, I hadn't, hadn't Thank you, Jeremiah. the new one yet. Darn it. Uh, but, yeah, so lots of, this is just so much fun. And you know what, folks? You don't got to hear about Marvel anymore for the rest of my top 100. But it's still fantastic. I might say Marvel my next one just to bring it home. Mm. All right. Number 14 here for the People's Choice has been on the list since the inception. It debuted at 8, was as high as 3. It is now 14. Uh, wow. The clue here. Beatles. How about The Beatles. Really? Um, War of the Ring? <laughs> Ticket to Ride, jeez. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, okay. my oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. my gosh. That was a good clue. That was a good, was clue. A good clue. Why right. did we miss that? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm way, I'm slow today. <laughs> All right, so I didn't combine the people's Ticket to Ride, so Ticket to Ride Europe was already on the list, but Ticket to Ride, the base game, still very, very popular. Got it. And obviously, since I believe they said... Covering all the different tickets rides, they sold five million, or at least that was like five years ago. They Shit, said that. At this point, who knows? This game is available everywhere. People, mm. this is this is as it's not quite where Catan ever got to. Sure, but it's close. It is like tickets to ride Catan and Pandemic are the big three. Like Carcassonne's kind of waving at them, almost right. there. Yeah. yeah, but those are the big three, and I tickets agree. to ride, just fantastic. So yeah, on Magic is also in that mix, I would think. I think Wingspan. Well, Magic the is, Gathering? Yeah. Well, I'm talking about games that, like. The Magic is, like, really yeah. oh, different. It's, like, yeah, so yeah. far it's kind beyond those. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like Wingspan is also. It's getting there. Sashaying up to mm -hmm. Carcassonne, waving in. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who knows? We'll see what happens next time. All right. So, anyway, your number 14 ticket to ride up from 18 last year. Woo! All right, my number 13 is a relatively new game that is a mix of worker placement and deck building. And um, it seemed to come out at a time when that became uh, the rage for a while. Oh. This is a very, very, maybe the most interactive Euro game that I really like. Um, remarkably interactive. Race to 10 points, and every point feels so significant. You are Lost on your... Arnak. Nah. No, the good one. Actually, I like Arnak. <laughs> I like Arnak, but it's Dang. not... I like Arnak, but it ain't in my top 100. Dune Imperium, however, is my number 13. This is a game that... You don't ever have a time where you are not just like on the edge of your seat based on whatever's happening, whether yes. it's your turn or someone else's turn, 
please don't take don't take that spot. Don't take that. Don't. I hate you with every fiber of my being. I'm going to destroy <laughs> my you. My word. In this, oh, I'm scared. This see? is the and one you game. You think this is an inner monologue? It's not. No. <laughs> this is the one game that really brings that out in me. Like this game, like you said, when you bruise that guy from our right. last game. When it was on your list. I'm spent when I'm done with this game. I am. Yes. I ain't playing anything after yes. this. I yeah. need to take a nap after I'm done with this game. It really just gets all of those emotions stirring. Um, and for a game to be able to do that, which is essentially what looks like a very kind of boring Euro, says something about the design. I haven't even played the most recent expansion. The first expansion I thought was great. You say the new one's even better. Happy really? to try Really? You thought it. the new one was better? A smidge. Are yeah. you kidding? Wow. Okay. So, so, I really like where's it. Where's this big box? Yeah. Well, they have one, don't they? Shut up. And, uh, yeah, they already they did the big box immediately. Remember? Yeah. With the minis and no, all that no, stuff. No, no, that was just an add-on pack. The no, game wasn't that, in that, was it? No, oh. but you can put the game. Everything fits yeah. in that. Big I box. want a big box. Mm -hmm. I also want a new drug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want to number free. thirteen. Dune Imperium, spectacular. That was good too. Yeah, that was good too. I like it. Uh, where am I at? Mm -hmm. 13 is the best game. Let me double check. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> the best game by the good doctor. Whoa. Ha Reiner Knizia. Ooh, okay, let's see. What are his games that you like? So it's not Tigers and Euphrates, because... Uh, <laughs> doi. Oh, I think I... Could it be would raw it, also? No, but I could this game be this high up on your list? I think it is. Is it a two-player card game? Let me see. Hold on. Mike, Mike's saying, is it Lost Cities is what Mike's no, saying. No, I'm not saying that. It was my number four at one point. Ever. Is it Blue Moon? Yeah. Blue Moon. Blue Moon. <laughs> and Tom, go ahead. Roy, kill it! This, this oh, game is you fantastic. You made it big. That's the very opposite of killing it, Roy. Take down the stream. The Give whole... it a this game is fantastic. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, I really disagree with I this. I know, I know, I know. So this is much. very much uh, not, not in line with you. Mike kind of agrees with me. I don't know if he would put it, you know, he's, he's obviously not. This is this could easily find its way into my top 100. It's fantastic. I, the reason why it's Just, not is that I don't own a copy anymore, and it's been a while since i played. Yeah. You can easily find copies. They give them away at yeah, conventions. Yeah, no, you're I don't right. I know that it's they a, do, Tom. This was not... Blue Moon Legends did not do well, from what I understand. Yeah, but try to buy a copy now. It's like a hundred and some bucks. Yeah, okay. Well, actually, there you Blue go. Moon City didn't do well, and I do like that game. Mm -hmm. that, for some reason, his theme did not grab people. I, I love the no, theme, because Blue actually. Moon, the original Blue Moon, which came in a pack, Cosmos, Cosmos. two-player game, mm -hmm. two factions in there, and then they released more factions. Mm -hmm. I don't think they would have put out that many expansions if it hadn't done well. Yeah, I think yeah, at the time right. it did fine. I think at the time, it was a product of its time and also, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, this is a head-to-head -head two-player game, fighty, fighty kind of game, sort of. Uh, and mechanically, I understand that some people, again, can be reductive and say this is kind of like war volleying a, a value, a mathematical value back and forth. It's, it's much more I than find that. It, it, I find it strikes a really nice balance between simplicity, yes, I mean, you know, again, tossing something at you and like, defend this, parry that, boom, bam. And some really neat mechanical restrictions that you impose on yourself for a reward on your opponent to try to hold them down. It's this really neat... I don't know, sword fight kind of dance. It you know, and it's like, hey, I'm tossing you a total of seven. You need to match or beat, but you can only do it with one card. Mm -hmm. And then you toss back an eight. And you're like, but you have to skip drawing cards after your turn. And you're like, mm -hmm. okay, here we go. I love it, man. Yeah. It's so neat. There's so much personality in these different decks. You can do a little bit of deck building, but to be honest... I've barely scratched the surface I, with that. I avoided the deck building. Yeah, actually. I've done it a bit. It's yeah. fun, you know, it's all right, but I haven't really done it that much. But the game is just so fun. It's absolutely one of my favorite two player games. There's another game that's on your list, although it was a bit lower, that kind of, now that you've mentioned it, I'm starting to see a little bit of, of uh, crossover there. And that's, it almost has a little bit of Radlands in it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not yeah. just the, the two-player head, head 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 thing. Radlands game out of your mouth when you're talking about Blue I Moon. Like, well, you're right, I, Blue Moon is a lot better than Radlands. Clearly, but. I <laughs> like this garbage. type of game. Yeah, right, for sure. It's actually, it's the type of game you don't normally I like. Normally Radlands, is not, right. 
combat collectible card games. Mm -hmm. That that sort of you know it's yep. uh, uh, similar to this. I clearly like those games. Yeah, yeah. Radlands certainly, Blue Moon and right. Blue Moon Legends, same game, mm -hmm. certainly. All right, Sasha from Oregon. Thank you, Sasha and Sasha. Yeah, Oregon, <laughs> Oregon, the greatest country in the world, and home of the Ducks. All right, unbelievably, folks, this is so odd that this will happen once in a top 100, but it's happened. I think this is the third time it's happened. An exact matchup. With Obviously, Mike, it's obviously. not with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dune Imperial wow. Navy! Oh, you guys. You Man. guys. All right, I all right. You know why? I'm going to change my 13 to Dune Imperium 2. I want to be part of the cool kids. Was, that, was that, this on your list? This was maybe. Yeah, it was 40. Okay. <laughs> That's three times worse. Mm. Anyhow. Mm, you um, are a math teacher. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, yeah. I This was a game... This was one of my most anticipated. When I went into this game, I was like, this is going to be good. Mm -hmm. I just, first of all, it's from Dire Wolf. Yeah. And I know I like their stuff. Rodney Smith had broken his vow of never saying yes, good things about right. a game. He's like, I don't normally give opinions, but this game's amazing. Mm -hmm. I was like, what? And then, so I went in expecting to like it. And then we played it and I was like, oh, my word, this is good. Yeah. And then the expansions made it better. Like, really rounded those wow. corners of the game. Wow. Especially that, like that new little... Token that just lets you clear the card line once per game. Yeah. Huge yeah. advance. Yeah, just great. I like everything about this. It often gets, for some reason, it gets compared to, we mentioned Arnak. Lost Runs of Arnak. Yeah. And it, it's it, weird because it even though they're not quite the same, it's like they're just, they're always at the same parties. And they're always wearing the same outfit. It seems like it, but they don't feel anything But they're like. both super popular. They are. They both have some similarities to them and they're always mentioned in the same breath and I actually put them on the yeah. same shelf in the Dice Tower Library because yeah. that amuses me. Well, yeah. they're a little bit like uh, Endless Winter now too yes. also gets thrown into that. It does. That, you know? It sure does. Yeah, but I think... Yeah, and, and, and also I like how the theme is very strong in this one too, to me. Alright, 13 for the people. The humans. Mm. It's been on the list since the beginning. It debuted at number one. Yo. Last year was at 21 and has moved up. So how can I... Wait, wait. It debuted at number one. It's been in the list since the beginning? Mm-hmm. So it debuted at number one. And it's 20... It was, tw it's, it was 21 last year, so it moved up? Yeah. It was 2011 it came out. Well, I think it's moved up because of a, s a slew of expansions. Um, Dominion? That's correct. Wow. Good job, Mike. Oh, man. I was struggling to come up with a What's clue. What's the clue? <laughs> the clue I was going to be like Ryan Lockett's first art. The cue is going to be ugly. Dominion. Oh, bigger. Oh, Big Ben. Hey, have I done over 90 plays of Dune? <laughs> no, I've not done over 90 plays of Dune. Mm -hmm. I'm not that good. Anyway, Dominion, I really do think this has gone up a little bit because they have really been pumping out. Not just new expansions, second edition, but second edition yeah. stuff, and it's really, yeah. it's as good as it ever has been. Hmm. I, they were starting to get in some weird stuff with Nocturne, and now they've kind of turned a corner, and they're reprinting the stuff people liked. Hey, there's more uh, duration cards. There's more of this and that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And you know what? I, I saw it. This was checked out in the cruise. It, it's not like being played in 2008 when it came out. Right. You threw a, a rock in in a crowded game room, and if you you would hit like six people playing Dominion yeah. with one rock. Yeah. It was just crazy, but still very popular. I still throw rocks. You I mean, do. They may not be hitting people playing Dominion, but they're playing something. <laughs> well, not if they're with a rock. They'll hit somebody. No, they're, yeah. they're playing eventually, yeah. So excited! We're so close to the top ten. We are so mm. close. We are so close. My uh, I do feel bad for these next two games because they're not too. in the top ten. Especially since my twelve and eleven were both in the top ten last mm -hmm. year. Mine were both in the top ten. Yeah, both of previous years. Gosh. Mine are probably right there with you. My yep. number twelve was number nine last year, so it's down just a few spots. But it's still a spectacular game. Um, the heaviest. Um, cooperative game that I've ever played. I'm not saying it's the heaviest cooperative game out there. It was definitely the heaviest cooperative game that I played and like. Um, I don't like it nearly as much as somebody else in this uh, studio, but it's a spectacular cooperative is game. This, this is Spirit Island? This is Spirit Island, yeah. Oh! Yeah, my number 12 is Spirit Island. This is a game that um, does a lot of things very well. Number one is that when people complain about alpha gamer problems, 
this pretty much solves that by making every <laughs> you faction so complex that you need to concentrate on what you're doing. Mm -hmm. and, the, and, and you have to be like, look, this is what I'm going to do this turn. Is there anybody that can move some of these invaders over here or can do? And then that's where the cooperation comes. But you can't be like, you do this, you do this, you do, I'm doing this. No way. You have, there's, that's just way too much information to parse. It uh, has some very clever card play where you've got, you know, slow powers and fast powers and the timing of those can be so uh, important. And the, how it just thematically kind of throws things on its head where you are playing as the spirits of this island that are working with the indigenous peoples to kind of strike fear into the heart of the, uh, of the people that are coming in to try to conquer the island. And so it does a lot of things very well. Now, maybe some people don't love the look of it. I'm... I'm neutral on the look I don't hate of the, the look game. of the game, but I hate the cover. The cover's definitely not putting its best foot forward. But there are some spirits that I like the look of it. And, and I thought the components are, are nice and, and everything else. Um, but this is a, a really, really unique uh, cooperative game. I do have to be in the in the mind space for it because it's not something I just, hey, let's play some Spirit Island, you know, You're pull right. it off the it show. It's not one of those games. It's an investment, right? You have to be ready to sit down and think and, and, and really put in the work. But... It will reward that. You know, you're going to get a meaty, compelling experience if you're willing to put in the time. My number 12, Spirit Island. It's easy. You don't want to have it? Oh, Jennifer Super Chat. Buffalo has the best pizza. I don't know if that's true or not, but they have wow. a really, they, really good burger place, remember? They have a lot of good food. They're known for wings, Buffalo. too, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they have a lot of good food. But that burger place... But that burger place, though. Now you get Reese Beaver up in a burger. That burger, though. That burger, though. Uh, my number 12. Wasn't quite in my top 10 last year. It was 11, but it's certainly been in my top 10. It has been my 6 in the past, very recently. It seems to be one of those games that, again, not a lot of people seem to enjoy or talk about, perhaps. And it gets a bad rap, in my opinion, for being unattractive, which I disagree with. Mm. This is Deus. I don't think Days is a bad looking game. I think it's over. I think that whole, oh, this board is ugly thing is overstated. Let's go look at the board. Let's look at it's, the board. It's fine. It's not beautiful, but it's not terrible. Uh, you can't, uh, you can barely I'm see telling the board, you, right? when they first, I first played this game, I swore we were playing a prototype, though. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I think the. Little... I think it's because the pieces are all very generic. They're like the they're like the settlements from Catan. They are things kind of like they that. They are, yeah. yeah. The wooden bits are generic looking. Yeah, like this I think is... that's where it comes from. That. Yeah. As opposed to the, I think the cards are pretty enough. The yeah. cards are very nice. The the board gets a lot of trash uh, talk. So, I don't know. The gameplay though is wonderful. This is. The main thing I enjoy about this game is this idea of when you want to build a card and you play a card, you pay for that with three sources you've gathered, put it on the table, and you trigger whatever ability it has. They gain three wood. Great. Take that. Next time I play a card into that specific column, which is that type of building, put it on top of that one, I pay those resources, and then I trigger the gain three wood card again mm -hmm. and the new one. And so on. So you have all these locations, all you know, your, your different types of units, buildings, that start developing combos. Where I can now play a card that says, convert wood to three money, one to one, as, many, as much as you want. Ooh, hold on, because mm -hmm. I'm getting three wood, and then I can switch grain for wood, and then I get to sell it all? Okay. And every time I add a new card to that stack, I get to do the entire chain again. Spreading on the board, conquering places. There's a little bit of that, you know, interaction with the other players, but it's certainly not in your face in that way. There's a little bit of it. I love the, yeah, the simplicity of that. Just getting combos going, spreading around, being in the right locations at the right time, conquering the, uh, the landscape. It's wonderful. Again, it gives me, I guess, the... I'm not a big Civ player, yeah, and this is in no way a Civ game, okay? It gives me everything I want from something like that. Yeah. I don't want more than this. Some economy, conquering places, a little bit of fighting, expansion. Maybe it's a full, maybe, maybe it's 4X. I don't know. And again, clearly not a 4X game, but this is all I want from that kind of thing. 
I really enjoy it. It's funny, this came out at a, I feel like this came out at around the same time as Elysium, and I always kind of put these those two games together in my I mind. Do, they do, do some similar bit. things, they right? They do a little bit. I don't know why. Yeah. I agree. They came out at the same time. And yeah. they do some similar things. And they both fell off the radar instantly. Very quickly. Yeah. I like Elysium a lot. I still own Elysium. Mm -hmm. This outpaces it okay. by... A wide margin, in my opinion. I haven't played either in a while. I think I've played Deus more recently than Elysium. Okay. All right, Sebastian, thank you for the super chat. Poland is the greatest country on Earth. But then Wilmer said that it is actually Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. All right, Mike, you think 12 is pretty high, right? Yeah, I think 12 is very high. Well, because it was number four last year, so drop oh, the 12. Oh, my goodness. But I would not consider that to be major slippage or... Uh, flash in the pan at all. Yeah, I mean, if you were going to say that a game was, like, the best in its class, I don't know that you'd want to put it all the way down at 12. Well, it still is the best in its class, actually. Mm. <laughs> it's my favorite pure card game, and that is The Crew. Mm. Third year in the list, You know what that 12. sounds like to me? Slippage. A little bit. Yeah. It's also you The know? Crew Mission Deep Sea, mm -hmm. which is my favorite version of this game. But, I mean... You like this theme better. Theme? <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Theme. I like that. I even at the pause sometimes, I was like, do you want to play Mission Deep Sea? I'm like, that's the new one, right? Because mm -hmm. it is weird to me that they're like, first we're going to explore space, but after that, the ocean. Yeah. What's next? The lake behind our house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is, I wonder what the is The basement. Next? What do you think is next? They actually, so they asked me, the, the Cosmos people, they gave me two options, and I forget what they were. I think, like, one was Very time. Very memorable, yeah. I could see, like, archaeology One was time, and something. one was something else, and they were like, which one sounds more interesting? And I was like, does it matter? Who yeah, cares, they're, guys? They're numbers on cards. But it is a fantastic cooperative trick-taking game. Thank you, Luke, for the super chat. The crew. Math. <laughs> All right. Okay. Mike, you are on Fire. Really? With your crossovers today. Whoa. With your exact crossovers. The Are people you kidding? at number 12 yeah. said Spirit Island. There you go. No joke. That's two in a row. Mike might be the Mike, voice of the people. I might. We need to change the Except for the, his esoteric uh, game picks that no one else can get. That that's what, that's what, yeah, that's that what is, keeps him from being you. the people. It does. I'm an enigma. <laughs> Wrapped in what? <laughs> a riddle. And embalmed in what? The crew. <laughs> yeah. okay, like and he's, a, he's he he already has it as well that when he dies, we have to put all his rare games in the. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah. All these people are like, no, nah. no, that goes in the coffin. <laughs> no, 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 get your hands off Aqua coffin. Garden. <laughs> <laughs> I'm embalmed in gravy. Hmm. Mm hmm. Should I say him there? That's weird. Mm. Let's move on. Yeah, let's move on. This is it. This is the game I know. that almost made the top this ten. This is so heartbreaking, man. This is heartbreaking because I like to hear mine. It booted out of the top ten, the highest ranking game from probably my favorite designer. Although it's so hard to say, I have a lot of designers. I have a lot of appreciation for. It's almost a crossover with Z, but what? not quite. It's a different game with the same theme. My number eleven is Blue Moon City. Um, yeah. ooh, back to esoteric stuff. All right, you're... Well, I don't think this is esoteric. It's just, this I mean... like it's, nominated for the spiel. Yeah, I don't think it's esoteric. It's just been it out was, of print for a while. That's Well, I guess that's what it is. Like, yeah. if you want to get a copy of this, you'd have to work hard at it. Well, no, now but, you I mean, can get one you can get a, You can get a Simon version but for you Super... you shouldn't. You should. The Cosmos version <laughs> is, is significantly better. I think for, the Simon one's the one in our library. I think it is, I unfortunately. Know. I have... Not the Do you best have it? Print. I have the original. Would you like the Simon one? Not Straight really. Trade. Not really. I'll give you five bucks for the top of it. Well, now we're talking. Um, so look, Blue Moon <laughs> City is a uh, a tile game a, a, that I don't tend to love those games, but all the tiles are on the board. It's not really tiling. It's not out. really. Yeah, there's a random out. board. It's a board. Yeah, that's made up of tiles, and you're trying to to flip those tiles over to their kind of constructed side. The yep. one side is a blueprint, and the other side is is a constructed side. Now. I think this this is a game that has a lot of nostalgia and personal importance for me. This is a game that I played with my wife a lot. Mm -hmm. And I just love the card play and how you have this huge hand of cards and you know there's something you want to do and you're like, there's got to be a way with these cards I can do what I want to do, but I don't, I, I don't see it right now. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
and you finally figure you're like, I can do this, this is I can all do this, loud, by the I can way. do this, and I, it usually is out loud. I think that there are maybe better Reiner Kinesia games, but this is my favorite. And right. see, I think those are two different things to to, to, I agree. to accentuate is that this is my favorite. There may be better designs, but this is my favorite. My I number don't think 11. you have to say that. Oh, that's our whole top 100. I know, but a lot of times no, no, people no, no. get... Unless I specifically you, say it. Mm -hmm. It is the best design, yeah. not just because I like it. Yeah, better. sometimes. And if you disagree, then you're wrong, you're Colonel Sanders. You're quantifiably wrong. That's right. You guys are so worried about this coffee table. Blue Moon Look, City it's five. is... There we go. Oh, my goodness. Blue Moon City is a race. It's a race game. I like race games. It is a card game. I like card games. It's a Kinesi game. Go? I like Kinesi you know games. My number 11 is Blue Moon City. I can see Blue Moon City, or maybe not, but Blue Moon something. Mm -hmm. Coming back, unfortunately, as a flipping right. Oy. All right, see, I hate you for saying that. You know what I mean? Can't you see it, though? Stop. Just Blue Moon Council. I mean, I can see them doing it. I, I sure Blue hope. Blue Moon Dragons. Blue and right. Oof. Yes. Uh, that sounds terrible. Can you please tell us your number 11? Of course Thanks I will. Yes. He, he ruined your number 11. Uh, that's all right. No, your number 11 is a wonderful game. I love it. I also have the good one. Do you? I do. All right. <laughs> There's only one of us three up here who's not a, what I would call a real gamer. I see. You know? I want a process of elimination. My number 11 uh, was my number 9 last year, and I, out too, hate this one slipping out of my top 10. Especially considering, uh, well, there's a promo out there that has me on it. Oh. That is an amazing promo. Is it a co-op? It. It's a co-op. <gasps> oh. This out of your 10? It's my 11, man. It's yeah. garbage. No, vassal. It's Atlantis Rising, second mm -hmm. edition. Mm-hmm. This is a wonderful cooperative game in which you are placing workers on a board, pushing your luck, hoping that Atlantis will not sink until you've managed to scrounge together the things you need to create a machine, a fantastical creation, to whisk you all the way to safety. That's what you're doing in it. And it is incredibly interactive, fun, Lots of conversation. The game is actually very conversational mm. for a cooperative game. I don't often find That's myself true. having a game in which, like, you're doing a lot of discussing, not just of, like, I, should I go here, what are you planning to do, but just conversation. Mm -hmm. I think this game allows for that, because it is very strategic and you need to do things, but I know the last couple of times I've played this, there's been a lot of talking and fun and... and joking and whatever yeah. while we are playing. And I've really enjoyed that. Not to say that this game is that light. There's plenty going on. It's just, again, I, I find myself having a good time with this one, easing into it. Atlantis Rising is wonderful. And one thing that does not get a lot of credit for that I find is a, an absolutely outstanding part of it is how many degrees of difficulty graduation are in it. Mm -hmm. You can tweak the difficulty in this in so many different ways. A lot of co-op games have maybe three modes, yeah. maybe four. In this, you can change so many little things right. to make the game sing for you. Like, oh, with, th with this many floods, I just find it too difficult. Done. We can pull out a couple, put in this one card into the deck, tweak it this way or that. I love that. Love it. Atlantis Rising, second edition. Woo. The best game. Not in my top two. <laughs> Thank you, Ole, for the super chat. We appreciate Ole. it. And Sean, who says Maryland's a great city and country and state. Uh, we'll go with one of those. I think it's city. But thank you both. Maryland. All right, my number 11. Now listen, it's a Euro game. I like this game a lot. In fact, very recently, it was my number one. 11 is still pretty good. Is it uh, a... Uve game? Is it? It is an Uve game. It dropped this far? It doesn't. It, it was. Wow. It was three last year. It's pretty high. It's pretty far. In okay. French means precipitous. <laughs> I still love La. I just taught it again. It's a fantastic oh, game. Oh my god. It's just that I like these ten nine games slightly better. Is it the artwork? No, the artwork's amazing. Nothing what? better. What? Shut up. Just go with it. Okay. Is that uh, a dog? Torsten. Or an erase mark. says the average Minnesota restaurant in Minnesota makes solidly okay burgers. 
Wouldn't that be a better joke if you said Tulsa? Yeah, because then it would be Oklahoma, yeah. Huh. Well, you didn't have to spell out the joke either. Oklahoma right. and OK. <laughs> oh, I get it. I get it. That's the state's abbreviation. I still love, love this game. It's still a 10 out of 10 for me. Because you go out to do, you ought to have more than 10 tens. You are, sure. Yes, of course. You can do whatever you Actually, want. Actually, I wonder where my, where me ranking at a 10 would stop. I think, I think like my 15 or 16, somewhere around here, one of them's not a 10. All right. You know, but, um, but the rest uh, of these are 10s. Alvra. They're amazing. I like Lahav. It is just the, the epitome of take good stuff. Get to take good actions the whole game. I love it. Yeah. Have you played this, Mike? Mm-hmm. Should I play it? Mm -mm. Done. Um, Done deal. I yeah. I mean, I'm I'm hit and miss with Uve games. Uh, yeah. I think I like more than I dislike. This was okay. It was not my favorite. Actually, this one. Is, uh, I hate to say it, it's one of my least favorites. I think I dislike more of his games than I like. Okay. I don't know if this would be one that would turn you around. Hey man, the people like this one, so I don't. No really no care no no. I mean, I'm in the minority. I know. Mm -hmm. it. All right, the People's Choice number 11. This is the first one that missed theirs. Um, it's hard the, to... This has been on the list for eight <laughs> years. This is a... This, someone else has mentioned this in our group today. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, what's a clue that doesn't give it away? Oh. Been on for uh, eight years. Gonna, I'm going to give an easy clue. Essential. It's a... Uh, Wish Dice Tower Essential, though. Comic Hunters? No. No, 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 not 11. Well, I know, but that's the only thing I remember I was talking about. I didn't say Dice Tower Essential. Uh, oh, Viticulture? Viticulture! Wow. Dice Tower Essential? <laughs> Viticulture. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> I'm Viticulture is coming Jamie. to the Dice Tower Essential uh, line. No. <laughs> uh, Viticulture, yes. Uh, just a very popular game. It was four last year from the people, so Man, very high. My goodness. Uh, it's, it's always been very close. It came at 50, 17, 7, 3, 11, 8, 4, 11. Just jumping around. Very, very popular game. Yes. It's not... Stone Meyer's most popular game, but no. very close there. That's saying something, though. He's got a lot of very popular games. Yes. So, there you go, folks. So, a couple things before we head out here. First of all, we got 10 more games left. Wow. So, secondly, that's tomorrow at 1. Here's what we'll do. Right now, we got 2,800 people watching and 400 likes. Okay. We'll throw a really cool contest in tomorrow. We'll send you a box of games from the studio if we hit... 5,000 people watching. What? No, so if we get 1,000 likes, we'll have the contest. Okay. And if we get 5,000 people watching, I'll double the size of the box. Oh my goodness. 1,000 likes. So we need like what? I can't see those numbers from here, so. Okay, so we need more than double the likes. So you want those likes now? No, it doesn't have to be now. Oh. It doesn't have to oh. be now. Well, but it has to be before the stream ends, right? Tomorrow, tomorrow. You mean on tomorrow's video. If yeah, you got a thousand video. likes. Oh, on tomorrow's video. You're oh, sending yeah. a lucky winner a box of goodies. Some of them will be baddies. Sure. Okay, a box of games. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I was like, I salivated on that. Mm, I love games. All right, we'll see. Mm. And if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. That's okay. We'll still do the top 10 tomorrow. Join us at 1 o'clock tomorrow. It's the last live thing this week. We got other videos going up. Uh, we're reviewing some interesting games, some cool stuff over mm -hmm. the weekend, too. Yeah, that's the worldwide. What? Is it worldwide? Yeah, it's worldwide. We can ship worldwide. Oh Kino's going to run and be like, goodness. Nah! Oh, my goodness. Get your friends. And this is, again, for tomorrow's video, to be clear, we're talking about. Yes, Mike, tomorrow's video. I'm just tomorrow's saying, video look. Tomorrow's video gets 1,000 likes people are and 5,000. Five well, we can't get the 5,000 people. Know. Now they're already dropping like flies. All right. Three all people right. just left while I was saying this sentence. I'm just saying. <laughs> Come back tomorrow, the top 10. Will there be new games? Oh. Um, yeah. There will be. Oh, oh, really? Oh, well, something I had to push a lot some good, the top ten. There's some good shake-ups in there'll my be, top ten. There'll be new games to my top ten. I, I, yeah. I refuse to say whether they are new yeah. games or not. Yeah, I'm going to be called a shill tomorrow. I'm, 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 I love it. I'm counting on it. We will see you all tomorrow. Until then, I'm Tom Vassal. I'm Mike Delicio. I'm Z Garcia. And you've been watching The Dice Tower.
one got hurt. No so one got hurt. That's the most important That's thing. That's an expensive camera. It's more expensive than you ever will be. <laughs>